This is New Cab News with Lauren Poland. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us. Nude entertainment is now fully legal for the first time in a decade in Lloydminster with a new zoning bylaw passing yesterday in City Council. Allowing strippers in the border city has caused heated debate since it was first brought forward, but every councillor in attendance voted in favor of the bylaw. Elise Cox has more. Zoning regulations for adult entertainment have been put in effect in the border city, but it wasn't without a heated public hearing. This was all regarding bylaw 49-2012. The bylaw states any nude entertainment establishments must be 300 meters away from schools, residential areas and major highways, forcing them into the industrial areas. The public hearing brought forth two in favor of the bylaw, two against and three spoke as affected community members. The men in favor walked away from council satisfied with the decision. I think if the, the whole decision comes down to if you want to go, you go. If you do not want to go, you don't go and had those against nude entertainment altogether in our city very upset. The people that we employ to run our city have just overruled the people of this community and the desires that we have. But it's the Ministerial Association who is greatly disappointed in the outcome. Tim Acey presented a nine-page legal opinion to Council that examines the charter of Lloydminster. The opinion in all those nine pages is that uh, the uh, council does have the right to prohibit adult entertainment or anything else for that matter. They then ask council to consider the document and postpone the second and third reading. Council did not. Very disappointed indeed. I can't believe that the mayor and council of this fine city of Lloydminster would be so arrogant as to pass second and third reading without... Uh, uh, dwelling on this uh, for the good of the people and the good of the community. Mayor Mulligan says the legal opinion contained many contentions. Um, so I think people are under an illusion that the charter is some magic bullet where we can be different. No, it just allows us to be able to effectively execute within two provinces. But the Ministerial Association isn't ready to quit yet. They are still collecting signatures for their petition, but Mulligan says their efforts are invalid. Our current legal advisors say that it's not valid. I can't do anything. So, I mean, if 100% of the population of Lloydminster signed that, they need to deliver that to the province. And the divide in opinion on this matter is something that will most likely be a long battle for the Ministerial Association because Council is pleased with the decision. You know, I think we've done the right things. I have professional advisors advising Council. I have a wise group of Council that has sat down and reviewed the material with me. We believe we're doing the right thing for Lloydminster, and we believe we're doing the right thing within our legal purview. Elise Cox, New Cap News. Meantime, exotic dancers are already taking the stage at one local venue, even though the nightclub doesn't comply with the city's new zoning regulations. A lawyer for the cooler told New Cap Adult Entertainment will continue at the club. He says it's been grandfathered in. They hold a permit. Uh, for what's called under the Lloydminster Land Use Bylaw, Eating and Drinking Establishment Major. And that particular permit allows them to serve food, alcohol, and to provide uh, theater, dancing, or cabaret entertainment, uh, which of course is exactly what they're doing. According to Murphy, the new bylaw has no power over current operations. Allow uh, entertainment of this type only in particular areas of the city. Uh, but on the basis of what's called a non-conforming use in the bylaw uh, and in, uh, in planning law, we're entitled to carry on with what we're doing. The city released this statement in response to the cooler's plans. Quote, the city of Lloydminster is working with legal counsel to determine next steps and process with regard to the recently issued stop order. According to Murphy, the club will take that stop order up with the Development Appeals Board in Lloydminster. Well, Alberta Health Services is confirming three new human cases of West Nile virus in the province. One case reported in the central region, which includes Lloydminster, is more severe than the rest and is the first such case in Alberta this year. It's called West Nile Neurological Syndrome and can cause tremors, unconsciousness, paralysis 
and even death. The other two cases were found in northern Alberta and the Calgary area. Alberta Health says the best way to protect yourself is by wearing insect repellent with DEET, long light colored clothing and a hat. To date, there have been four confirmed human cases in Alberta, all in women, and 71 cases across the country. Last year, 102 cases of West Nile virus were reported across Canada. Police and fire crews were called to the new College Park School after a gas leak at the construction site. This is the third gas leak at the site in the past two months, and emergency crews say at least some of the leaks could have been prevented. A lot of it is uh, the construction crews not getting their line locates before they dig. And it's the other two didn't have line locates. This one we're not sure about. There was some. Now whether they were all there, we're not sure. ATCO gas arrived on scene to pinch off the line, avoiding any impact on nearby residents. The gas leak was not considered a danger to the public. Well, the youngest border city councillor will not be vying for a seat in this coming election. TJ Altman served two terms with council and says it wasn't an easy decision not to run. Altman says his full-time career is becoming more demanding and he no longer has the time to serve on council. With uh, any kind of uh, uh, consistency, I can go back to my, my planning practice and say, you know what, I, I've done a good job at the city, so now it's, it's time to put all my efforts toward that. Uh, I think TJ contributed uh, greatly to bring a perspective that he felt he carried on his shoulders for an entire demographic of people under that 45-year-old. Uh, he carried a heavy load for that. And as the youngest councillor, TJ represented a different demographic starting his own independent business. Altman says the thing he'll miss the most during his time on council are all of the people that he's met. Meantime, a general election bylaw is now in place, outlining polling areas and election requirements for the October 24th civic vote. There are some changes this year with requirements for identification. Everyone will have to show a photo ID before voting. If you don't have photo ID, then you have to show two pieces of identification that both show your name and at least one that shows your address. The polling areas haven't changed since the last election and there are still options for advanced and special or mobile polls for those who can't leave their house to take on the vote.